Computers have passed through a series of generations and today we would like to look at all the generations that computers have passed through. Welcome to yet another video, Tech Lovers, and please don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification icon so that you can be the first to view when I upload another video. So in today's lesson, the five generations, the first generation from 1946 to 1959, which was vacuum tube based, second generation, which was transistor based, third generation, which was integrated circuit based, the fourth generation, which was VLSI microprocessor based, and the fifth generation, which was ULSI microprocessor based. To the first generation, which was from 1946 to 1959, and this in this generation, computers used vacuum tubes as the basic component for memory. These tubes, like electric bulbs, produced a lot of heat and the installation used to fuse frequently. Therefore, they were very expensive and only large organizations were able to afford them. Then they were huge in size. As you can see in this picture, they needed an SC because of the excessive heat they generated and they had slow input and output devices such as the punch cards, the magnetic tapes, and the paper tapes. And then they were costly and consumed a lot of electricity and they were not portable because they were really huge in size. Let's look at some of the computers in this generation. We have the electronic numeric integrator computer. Yes, that. And you can see the first ladies who touched it. And then we also have the electronic discrete variable automatic computer and then IBM 701 and IBM 650. And then let's look straight to the second generation computers which ran from a period of 1959 to 1965 and in this generation computers used were very cheap compared to the first generation consumed less power were more compact in size they were more reliable and faster compared to those that use the vacuum tubes and then in still in this generation magnetic cores were used for primary memory and for secondary storage devices, they use the magnetic tapes and disks. And yes, as you can see, they were really small in size. You can see that lady operating the computer. Then we also have the we also have to know that they use the assembly language and high-level programming languages like COBOL. And the operating system that they used was the batch processing and multi-processing operating system. And let us also see some of the examples of operation. We have the IBM's 1620, then we also have IBM 794, and then we have the CDC 160. 1,604, 1, and then we have Unique Universe 1,108. And as you can see, they were really much smaller compared to the first generation computers. Let us see whether the third generation were even smaller. Keep watching till the end to find out which generation we are in. 
so we have the third generation computers so these ones were these generations started from 1965 to 1971 yes from 1965 to 71 then they used the integrated circuits instead of the transistors then a single integrated circuit had many transistors resistors and even did you know that they also had capacitors yes and then they were and something to note is that the integrated circuit was invented by jack kilby yes by jack kilby that was just a food for thought then the development made computers smaller in size reliable and effective actually in this generation remote process remote processing we also have time sharing multi-processing operating systems were used and a high level language like the front fountain fountain cobol pascal ah, were basically used during this generation and as you can see they were really small compared to the other two generations and then they were less they were faster generated less heat they were really small in size they supported high level languages consumed lesser electricity then also needed ac to cool down because they still produced some heat right yes and uh, also some examples of these computers so some of them we have ibm 360 yes we have ibm 300 series and then we also have the fourth generation yes in the fourth generation we had then in the fourth generation we had the period of from 1971 to 1980 and these computers used very large scale integrated circuits which is the vlsi technology yes and they were really cheap portable they used uh, PCs, yes, personal computers. In the fourth generation computers, they were also more powerful, more reliable, more comfortable. And here, basically, no, no ACs were really required. No ACs were required. So if you had one, you could use, but they were not required. And it gave a raise to personal computer revolution. And still, in this generation it's where we also had time sharing real-time network distributed operating systems were used then all the high level languages such as such as c c plus plus for those who like programming c plus plus dbase and so much more were used in the fourth generation at also some of the computers used in this so we have the dc10 and then we have the pdp11 car one and car x mp yeah so the image of the test 10 is that we have the d pdp yes we also have the and you can really see that they were really small yeah they were really small so as time kept moving the size reduced and then we have the fifth generation which was now from 1980 till date and yes till date means we are in the fifth generation computers yes so in this fifth generation computers 
the VLSI technology became the ULSI, which is the ultra large scale integration. Yes, it was the one used, resulting in to the production of microprocessor chips having 10 million electric electronic components. Isn't that just so amazing? Yes, and then also in this generation is where it was based on AI, which is artificial intelligence software, which is simply an imagine branch in computer science, which interprets the meaning, the means and method of like making computers think like humans. So true. And then we also have the advancement in parallel processing was also invented in this system. So in the AI, we have robotics, neural network, game playing, development of expert systems to make decisions in real life situations, natural languages, understanding and generation. Yes, so they were also more friendly. They were more friendly availability of very powerful and compact computers at cheaper rates. So we can see in this picture, we have the phones, the laptops, notepads, desktops, iPads, and lots more. Let us also look at some of the examples of the computers used here. We have the desktop. We have the desktop, yes, and the laptop, the ultra book, and then the Chromebooks. Yes, guys, so that has been the series through which the computer has moved from the first generation, right from those days of 1949 till date, which is 2020. Thank you very much, guys. For and thank you for watching and i hope you enjoyed please don't forget to click on the bell notification icon and please share the content if you found it useful and don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it thank you very much take lovers till next time in the next video thank you very much